On this episode, Christian has a wish. I just want to see the circles. And then his wish comes true. <laughs> but that gives him weird ideas. I also want to explode. Mm, hi everybody, hi everybody, welcome. This is Christian, this is LazyFs Academy. This is the advanced schmuck tutorial, short hair, hopefully camera is gonna stay sharp today. We have a lot of stuff to do today. Um, all right, so let us see what is happening. Uh, previously, we we're working on this little tool, this little software. Uh, we wanted to create a blob and this was supposed to be the atom of our explosion, the elements, the building blocks, the Lego pieces with which we're gonna build our explosion. Now, the explosion doesn't exist yet, but the blob looks pretty sweet, thanks to some last minute fixes, tweaks and so forth, which were a bit costly, 40 tokens for this fix and then some additional 55 tokens, uh, tokens for this tweak. We are kind of like messing around with this and there's probably some ways of making this a bit more compact even more. I'm relying on people typing furiously in the chat how to make this even more compact. Uh, but for now, we're gonna move on. We're gonna just accept this as being done and we're gonna move on and we're gonna create um, the actual explosion. And for that, I'm just gonna press escape here and I'm gonna go save, expel. I'm gonna create a new program because this is kind of like rem removed from the blob stuff. I'm gonna rewrite the blob stuff into a, like a explosion prototype. So technically it's two prototypes. Okay, so what are the things that I wanna change? <clears throat> I'm gonna keep this around. Um, uh, basically, First of all, I, I don't want to just have one blob anymore. That's those those days are over. No, no longer just one blob. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not printing the radius of my blob, therefore, and then uh, I'm I'm no longer you know changing the size of our blob or the keys. Now I want to press a button, and an explosion happens. That's something that I want to be happening now. So we're gonna go uh, if btn p x then. And now we're gonna have to think about how we're gonna trigger our explosion, you know, what's gonna be an interface to the rest of the game, because right now we just have like this blob stuff happening here. Uh, I'm gonna create a new tab for this. Uh, I'm gonna uh, make a function called explode. Seems okay to me. Uh, EX, E, uh, Y. We're gonna set a position of uh, where we're gonna explode things, and that's gonna be it. That's gonna be that's gonna be the interface. I just want to be able to say, like when later on when we play the game, I just wanna say, like, put an explosion there. Now, little thing here, we might have multiple explode functions later on. Because right now this is gonna be supposed to be an explosion that is supposed to cover a um, mm, um, a popcorn type enemy, like the smallest kind of enemy that we have, and it's gonna be fine for the smallest type of enemies. It's, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna get us started. Um, it is possible or likely that later on throughout the development, we're going to have to write a second explosion function that is going to be more elaborate, bigger um, for bigger enemies. Um, but we don't have bigger enemies right now. And I just want to see if we can make it work. That's my goal here. I don't want to create like a whole palette of explosions. I think that's something we can do later on. Good. So this will explode things. Now there's some problems here. There's some things that I want to set up before we get into the nitty gritty. And that is, um, again, with the same thing with a blob. With a blob, before we started drawing the blob, we set up a system where we can just change the size because we want to set up an environment where we can you know, fine tune the look and feel of the blob. We want to be able to quickly ascertain what the blob looks like. And uh, we want to do the same thing here with explosion. We want to create an environment where we can uh, debug the explosion. We can see exactly what is happening with our explosion. And uh, if we just press a button in explosion place, that's good, but we can do better. We should be able to do better. And we, uh, something I want to set up is a, is a system where I can press a button, a different button, I will get an explosion, but also I can step through individual frames of the explosion. So I can see frame perfect what is happening with the explosion. Frame perfect. 
All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, okay, so first of all, let me, let me, <coughs> oops, no, that's good. First of all, here in update 60, we're going to go to ex explosion and then we're going to do the explosion in the center of the screen. Maybe later on, we're going to actually bring in the sprite from the uh, mock-up and we're going to make, make that sprite explode. But for now, I think I'm just like exploding in the middle of the, of the screen, it's fine. Uh, but then BTNP, if we press the other button, O, then, well, in this case, I also want to explode. I also want to explode, but also I want to set up a, maybe a variable called slow-mo. <clears throat> and it's gonna be false by default. But if I press that, that second button, I will explode and I will set slow-mo to true. And if I press X, I'm gonna set slow-mo to false. So this slow-mo, indicates that the way we're handling the update function is going to be different. Um, right, 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 right. And something now, we're going to do something. Well, first of all, uh, I want to bring our, my beautiful, my beautiful trusted variable t plus equals one. Uh, and then you're going to have t equals zero. I want to have my little variable that counts the amount of frame that have, um, have passed. And I'm going to, I, I want to actually write it to the screen. That's the first thing I want to write to the screen. Something like this. Let's see here how this works. Okay, we have a little counter of frames. And so what I want to do now is if I press O, the, the circle button, I want that counter to freeze, and then I want to be able to step through that counter with, with a key press, okay? So we have to do something like, if slow-mo equals false, then end. And only then we are advancing the timer. Or B, B, T, and P, R. Shift R, this is Shift R. Um, so if slow mo is false, then we're gonna let the timer run. Or if slow mo is true, but we also press that button to the right, then we also advance the timer, okay? Um, and in fact, we let's let's reset the timer to zero by the time we press the button. So here is how things will work. I press X and nothing happens. I press O and we get a zero. So now the timer is no longer progressing. And then I, when I press the button, I can advance the timer. That's what I want. And pressing X will resume the timer. Perfect. It's just a timer for now, but we're gonna do some more stuff in a second here. All right, so let us get into the nitty gritty. Um, so we have a function that draws all of our particles, uh, just this blob, blob function. We're gonna do some changes to that later on because you might want to have different types of particles, not just blobs. But for now, that this is good for now. And so I want kind of like a similar function that goes through all of the particles and then just does them, does something with them, just animates them. I'm gonna call this do part. Uh, and this will do the, the particle thing. Um, and I'm gonna do this right here in this new tab, because this is the blob tab, right? This is just like the blob stuff that we had that we are tweaking. So it might be worthwhile just putting it in, the, in this tab. So we're gonna go function do part uh, p. Okay, so we the set the, the stage is set, and now just to see that this explodes uh, function works, I mean, just gonna we're gonna add something to the particle. Uh, just gonna add a particle just to see that something happens. Uh, parts, yeah. So we're gonna go add parts. Curly brackets, curly brackets closed, mm, and then in here we can now put in some some information for the particle. X equals e x y equals ey we're getting those uh parameters and putting them into the the particle and that's oh we need an r as well let's do an r of 20 whatever and then if i press the button our particle appears perfect <laughs> done <laughs> let's go to the doggy zone. <laughs> right so now we have to think about we have to think about what the brain of the particle is. What kind of things do we want to do with the particle? What are, you know, parameters? What is the logic behind the particle? There are some things that we want to do with the particle. And here are the, the, the effects that we want to create. We want to create a short flash. We want to create a fireball. 
we want to create some smoke as well. And you know, it has we have need we have to this behavior and so forth. But let us start with some um Here's something that's interesting. We might have to have a lot of particles, right? We want to have a lot of particles that maybe appear later on, like because there's smoke billowing and so forth, right? So we have to do like a whole sequence of particles appearing maybe on the screen. But the explosion function is being called at the beginning of the explosion. So when we create all of the particles here, that means that some of the particles, the particles that maybe appear later on throughout the explosion, uh, will get created at this point, at the beginning of the explosion, but won't get shown on the screen until it's their time to enter the stage, so to speak. And so I think this is kind of like an important feature of particles, and we're going to see maybe also other things, maybe like bullets. So uh, I want to add a weight parameter. And so that's kind of like a countdown timer for each particle that counts down to zero. And when it counts down to zero, then the particle actually appears on the screen. Until then, it's just countdown. Okay, so it's kind of like a weight function. I want to also add an age function. Uh, I, each particle should have an age and that age should start counting up uh, when the particle spawns, when the particle first appears, when the weight timer runs down to zero. And then I also want to add a max age counter. Now, all of these, all of these have nothing to do with like animation, movement, or anything. All of these are just managing, you know, the timing of particles when the particles appear and when the particles disappear. I want to have these functions for sure. These is, these are things that I think will appear uh, apply to any particle. All right, so let us do this thing. So something we can do something. Let's let's start with a weight thing. Um, now the thing with the, with the, um, we can add a lot of properties to particles, but we kind of have to program. We should generally program the particles in a way that um, the the whole particle will work if nil is assigned to, to all those parameters. If there's just no nothing inside the parameter, I think it's a good idea to program it so that if nil you know is is a valid thing, because otherwise every time we create a particle. We have to always specify the weight, even those for the particles, even even for the particles that immediately spawn, right? Even if the weight is zero, we still have to always specify the weight equals zero. And um, you know, with weight, maybe it's not that bad, but later on we're gonna get like very you know rare functions for the particles, and it's good always to assume that the particle code works, even if all those different weird parameters are not actually set, you know. So something I want to do here is that the particle actually starts being animated when weight is nil. <laughs> so, let, let me let me explain it real quick. So if p dot weight, then else end. Now we're going to put all of the partic particle code here, and here is just weight countdown. And when a weight countdown reaches zero, we're going to set the weight to nil, and then the particle actually starts. And something that we also have to do here when we're drawing the particles, we want to make sure that the particle is not being drawn on the screen if weight is set, not set to nil. So if p dot weight equals nil, then we're going to draw the blob. Okay. So when weight is nil, when there is no seconds to wait anymore, then we're going to actually start drawing um, the particles. And so here we're just going to do um, p dot weight minus equal one. If p dot, dot weight equals zero, then or equals or smaller than zero. Um, yeah, then p dot weight equals nil. So when the countdown timer has reached zero, we set it to nil. And so on the next frame, we're gonna start actually animating it, okay? Now let's see if this actually works. Let's see if this works. So we have set um, our weight to nothing here. So weight is nil actually for this one. So let's run this. We're gonna press this thing. Okay, a particle appears. But now let's set weight to 60. Let's run this. I'm going to press the explosion button now. 
and it appeared after a second. Okay, so it had like an internal countdown timer happening. And now, of course, let's let's set it to maybe like 10. We can also check our, uh, test our, count, um, you know, like our frame review system. We're gonna, I'm gonna press the other button. Now the timer has stopped, it's frozen, and now I can step to individual frames. And at frame 10, the particle appears. Perfect, 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 perfect. All right. I'm just happy when things work. Happy as a clam. Right, so um, next uh, we're gonna talk about, um, so weight is finished. Let's talk about age and maximum age. <clears throat> so with age is like, again, we haven't actually, we don't want to set the age when every time we create a particle, so it might be worthwhile doing like a, you know, um, um, p dot age equals uh, p dot age or zero. This is kind of like a ternary, like the ternary thing that I talked about. If there is a value assigned to age, then we want to put that value in age. And if there's no value assigned to age, then we're going to assign zero to age. Okay. And then we're going to p dot age plus equals one, which means particles will always have an age of one. At least they're gonna start with an age of one, which is okay. Because like if um, the particle has no age assigned, it will have the age of zero assigned to it and then immediately plus one. Uh, but that's okay, I think. And then we can go p dot max age. Um, right, 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 right. And then we're gonna go if p dot max age, uh, if p dot age, is greater or equals p dot max h. And in this case, we're gonna go delete um, uh, par parts, right? P. Just gonna delete the particle from the particles. So if our um, uh, particle um, has reaches its, its maximum h, then we're gonna delete it. And this also means that we kind of have to set a maximum h for every particle. But I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that because it's kind of like necessary to, to remove the particles at some point. So let's go max age equals, uh, yeah, let's go 10, whatever. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna run this. Particle appears and then disappears. Ooh! Let's try now the frame by frame analysis. Now particle appears. Now particle disappears. <laughs> Amazing. Everything works today. Even the camera focuses. What's happening? <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Okay, okay. So we can actually start doing the things that we talked about. We can start doing the things that, that this is already enough to fulfill one of our steps that we wanted to do. Remember, at the beginning, we want to do a short flash. Well, we can do that now. We can do the short flash here. This is our short flash. Right, so let's, um, I actually did some experiments. I think 17 is a good radius for the flash if you want to cover a um, um, a 16 times 16 sprite. Uh, we're gonna pull in a sprite maybe in our next episode or something so we can actually see something explode. I think this is important. But anyway, um, so radius 17, uh, weight is gonna be Nil. We just want to just, just going to delete it. We're just going to show it immediately. Uh, max age is going to be two. Okay, so we're going to immediately show a, a circle for two frames. That's something that we saw. You remember back in the days when we went through the frames of the explosion in the Donpachi? It had a flash for two seconds at the beginning, and this is going to be our flash. So I'm going to do an explosion. Boom! That's our flash. You can see just like it's, it's instantaneous very quickly, just like woo, shocks your visual nerves and then disappears. And then later on, we're going to have the fireball cloud. But for now, we just want to see that something happened. Uh, now let's do this frame by frame analysis, analysis. One frame, two frames disappears. Perfect. That's what we wanted. Good. Okay, so let us get to the next topic, which is very important to me which is kind of like the deal with what we're doing here. So we have the short flash, we have the contrast frame. By the way, there's we have to st still do color. 
let's, let, me, let me do a to-do here. Uh, we had a different to-do on the other, that doesn't matter. We have to at some point do color because the flash is right now yellow and that's not a really good flash color. We're gonna put the whole issue of color aside for now. Let's just like work with the orange balls that we have right now. And then later on, we're gonna have colorful balls, okay? Good, so we have the short flash, we have the contrast frame now, uh, but now we have to do fireball and smoke. And um, this is now where the plan comes together. Uh, you saw the footage from uh, Macros, where you have like these kind of like, again, raspberries of balls, spheres, or um, I would call them grapes. Let's call them grapes, like like bundles of grapes, right? We want to create like a like similar effect where you have a grape of balls that, that expand and then maybe come together. So they all kind of like bunch up and really small and get bigger and, and expand and then go together again. And we're gonna stack them on top of each other and stagger them in an explosion so it will look like, you know, new puffs of smoke are emerging from a collapsing puff of smoke. So you get that billowing effect. I'm gonna step you through one step at a time, but I want to create this grape. That's something I wanna do. I wanna create this grape of particles. So let's do a function that just does, does just that. Function grape. Particle grape. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go E, X, E, Y. Again, we want to set a position for the grape. And here in the in explosion, we're just gonna go E, X, E, Y. Um, later on, we're gonna think about, you know, the grapes, that, that's where they spawn and so forth. But for now, we're just gonna create one. And the idea is when, basically, this is gonna be our explode function, roughly speaking. Uh, we're gonna have this flash particle that we added, and then we're just gonna use this grape function to create multiple of those of those particle grapes that, that below and are animated and so forth. And of course, there's gonna be more parameters to each of those grip function, but for now, we're just gonna start building it from scratch, okay? Good, but let's do one grip for, for now and think about things later. Right, so <clears throat> what I want to do now is I want to create multiple particles in a circle. Um, let's be, let me do a, like a little little visualization of what we're trying to do, okay? Just like, just so we know where, where we are. So imagine a circle, if you will. Uh, but that's just like a, just like a you know, reference circle, right? And then I want to create multiple circles on top here, right? I want to create multiple circles on top here, something like this. I'm not sure if this is gonna be this number of, of grapes, but something like this. And then maybe in the middle, there's gonna be a big explosion. Something like this, you know, and the red circles are basically our blobs. So I wanna create a blob in the center and surrounding it uh, an equal distance for now, we're just gonna have a bunch of other circles, uh, blobs appearing. That's something that we're going for, okay? So how are we going to do this? Well, there's obviously gonna be a, a, a four next loop involved at some point, right? So let's, let's be doing like a, let's just like start writing ideas. So let's see, let's say, let's say we have a steps variable. Uh, maybe this is going to be later on, there's going to be like, uh, we can change the amount of steps. So that's why I want to maybe uh, have it on a variable. But this variable saves how many circles appear uh, surrounding the center circle. We want to spawn the surrounding circles first, and then we're going to spawn the cent center circle because we want the center circle to be on top of the uh, peripheral circles, okay? Okay, so we have steps and I'm gonna go basically for i equals one comma steps do, like a for next loop. And in here, we're gonna spawn the circles, right? Spawn blobs. Something like this, right? Um, it would be maybe good to, because we want um, we want to add some randomness to it. Uh, it's going to be difficult to make those explosions feel like very unique. We're going to talk about this later on, but maybe a good way to start is to at least make sure that we are always like there's like the first circle that the first circle that we're drawing that it's drawn like the angle from from the center circle, the angle from which we start drawing the first circle that's kind of like randomized. So let's something like let's do a variable called ang standing for angle, and we're gonna go ang equals R and D. We're just gonna put a random number in there from zero to one. Um, because remember, in Pico 8, 
uh, we are working with a, a angle system uh, that doesn't go from zero to 360 degrees. That's not how it works. It grows from zero to one. So one is an entire circle. So just, this is really convenient. For example, here where we can just like, if you want to pick a random angle, then we just go R and D. And that's it. That's going to be just like a random angle. Nice. All right. So here we, well, we're going to probably at some point, we're going to spawn a circle. So let's just, let's get this one, this, this one out. Here we're going to spawn the blobs, right? Um, we're going to figure out the X and Y. That's something that we have to figure out. We don't know exactly what X and Y is going to be. Uh, radius. I, I'm not sure. Let's just go like foot five or something like this. Uh, maximum H, um, I'm going to set it to 60 or, or like 120. I want to just see the circles for now. And we're going to think about, you know, how to animate them and so forth later on. You know what? I just let's set it to, let's just set it to 32,000. I just want to see the circles. I don't want them to go away. Okay, that's good. Um, now let's take care of X and Y. So here we're going to use sine and cosine. Because we are uh, spawning this, uh, the, the centers of the blobs are going to be on a circle, right? And it's going to be like something like ang. But if you look at do it like this, then we're going to sp spawn basically six, six circle on the same spot. So that's not possible. So we always have to advance the angle uh, as we spawn more circles. So the first circle is going to be at the random position, the next circle is going to be one step further and so forth. I think another visualization is due. So let's see, let's say we have a circle, right? So what we're doing is we're just like, if this is the center, oh man, just give me, why don't you give me, if this is the center, we're first picking a random angle, right? And then we're going to spawn a circle here. And then we kind of have to go a certain amount along the circle and spawn the second circle here. And then I'm going to go a second around the circle and spawn a second here. Like we have to like now go across the circle from a, starting from a random position and start spawning things around the circle. That's our idea here. So we kind of have to figure out what kind of, what the distance is between two, two centers of the circle. And that sounds complicated, but it's actually not. It's just like one divided by six. That's it. The, the angle math in PQ8 is really nice. It's really, really nice. Um, so let's go like something like, hmm, maybe steps was the wrong. Uh, no, distance is also not good. Um, let's call this spokes. And spokes. And then the other one is called step. Step equals one divided by spokes. This step is now the angle between two circles on the on the around the grape, um, and so now we can go um, here down where we're we'll spawning the interesting circles. We're going to go ang, so a random angle that we what we started out with, and then plus uh, step multiplied by i. That's it. And set the same here with a cosine. That's all there is. And that might be everything. Let's see. Let's let's just like cross our fingers. Oh wait, wait, wait. There's there's mm, there's a mm, there is a thing. Sine and cosine um, deliver you know results from minus one to plus one. It's 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 going to be just like a tiny circle that we're drawing. We have to also have like a, a radius uh, with which uh, within which we are spawning. So I'm going to call this local dist for distance. Now, what distance are we going to pick? If the individual circles have a radius of five, uh, let's do something like eight. Just, just try something. Um, so here we're going to multiply the results of cosine, sine, and cosine with dist. We kind of did all this stuff a little bit when we did um, the uh, spread fire in, in the basic schmuck tutorial. So uh, this is not necessarily, you know. Uh, new new grounds, but I just want to make sure I'm going step by step so I don't lose anybody. Okay, now let's see how this looks. It's up there in the corner, losing its religion. Um, I think we need to do ex plus at the beginning and ey plus. There it is.
Isn't that a cool ring of fire, baby? Yes, 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 yes. Now there's one thing missing. We need to have the center circle and we're gonna spawn that after the uh, that if statement. And that's just gonna be in the center. We can uh, leave that whole sine and cosine business out and that's gonna be it. So let's see how that works. Ooh, didn't know you could, but you can. <laughs> Um, I want to set the max H120 so we can spawn multiple. Yes. Mm hmm. Oh, yes. Naturally, you can see how the circle, <laughs> we can spawn multiple ones. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, there's something I noticed about the circles. They look a little bit, the blobs, they look a little bit um, unhinged. And that is, yeah, because we are not flooring the Y. Yeah, we are not flooring PX and PY. Um, so maybe you can do a, a floor. Floor, can we do this? Yeah, that looks better. Ah, yeah. I love it. This, this is this is so good. This already looks a little bit like it. This looks like the footage that we saw from from you know from macros. It's maybe a bit regular, but yeah, yeah. This is this is exactly what I was looking for. Now something that's also fun here, you can you can use this as a platform to start experimenting with the with the with the stuff. For example, you can change the number of spokes. What does it look like if we have just three? Okay, that's a UFO or something like this fidget spinner, right? <laughs> Let's do five. Okay, that's a five explosion. That's not bad. That's actually okay. Let's do 12. Ooh, okay, that's too many. Uh, it's always fun to see too many. You kind of always want to see too many. Eight is also too many. Seven. Ooh, okay, seven is, is, is okay. It's okay. And then six. I think six is kind of like a sweet spot. I, to be honest, I pick six because I already did those experiments. I think we can also get away with five. I think that's also okay. Um, now, this is also, of course, all related to the uh, radius of the circles. If you make the circles bigger, then you can maybe get away with bigger, with less, with less spokes. Uh, let's say four and then really big ones. See, you can, you can, you can create very, very different explosions now. And if you can make them really small, like three, then maybe eight is viable. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, six. And radius five is, I think, a nice looking explosion, especially if we want to blow up a little popcorn kind of enemy. And so this is now where we're going to move on to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm, the doggy zone. Right, the doggy zone. So we have set up our little system. We can preview the explosion. We can spawn a little grape of blobs. That's what, that's what we were looking for. But now the next step is uh, obviously to animate the blob. We have to animate the grapes. And that's gonna be the task for the doggy zone. And I have to apologize because in the last episodes, I always kind of like, I, that's kind of the third time I'm basically doing the same task for the doggy zone. But it's kind of like in the nature of things, we're kind of like going through this very, very long protracted process step by step. And there's just not a lot of things that I can like experiments and things that I can do while we have like this unfinished program here. Generally experimenting with this grape and experimenting with, you know, what kind of properties particles have. So I want you to go ahead and do your own experiments. Uh, again, something I want to see is now that the grape, when we spawn the grape, is not, not just frozen in time, but maybe it starts small gets bigger and these particles move uh, to the sides and then collapses uh, uh, back onto itself. I want you to, each grape, to go through this process. And, uh, you know, for that you would have to um, animate the position of each blob and animate the maybe the, um, the radius of each blob as well. So that's the task for the next episode.
Yes, yes, yes. And this is also the part where I say thank you to all the beautiful people over at coffee.com who are supporting this show. Thank you so much for supporting the show. This means a lot to me. We have some newcomers this time around. We have our Lexi user 1366 and Bronski. Welcome to the crew. Also, I want to give a big shout out to one of my long time supporters, Bellorek. Thank you so much for your recent incredibly generous donation. Thank you so much, Bellorek. Speaking of which, this time around, I also wanted to um, read out a question from Shifu, which is again, one of the recent additions with the recent supporters that recently joined us. And they asked me, I've started game dev last year. I have a lot of unfinished projects. Unfortunately, I'm super bad at documenting. So my goal for the next week is to take screenshots, GIFs, and write a small text about all of the projects. Now the question is where I can upload this kind of stuff. Is it a good idea? Instagram or coffee maybe? I don't really know. Uh, this is a really good question. I wanted to read this out publicly because this was a like private message, but I wanted to read this out publicly uh, with permission of Shifu. Uh, because I think this is, um, this is something that comes up over and over again. Like the question of how you document projects is something that is kind of long-standing discussion in the game dev community. Um, I think one key insight, one key question that you should ask yourself when you approach documenting your project is how are you going to use this documentation in the future? Imagine yourself like what are the uses, use cases that you're going to go through this um, uh, with this documentation and that will answer a lot of questions how and where you're going to want to put this information. Ask yourself why you're documenting things and how are you going to access this information in the future? And of course, I also wanted to mention that if you want to be one of our supporters on coffee.com, you can do so. And one of the major perks is that you get access to new episodes earlier, coffee.com slash lazy devs. We are in the thick of it, ladies and gentlemen. We are going through revolutionary changes. We are getting closer to the goal of the explosions next time around. Animated grapes. See you next time around. Bye bye.